interesting week I've had uh, with uh, some revelation and dealing with some health issues. It's just been really getting better and better as more I'm stepping into some things and doing things. And Well, Yahweh uh, began to minister to me about Matthew twenty two fourteen. It says, many are called, but few are chosen. And our understanding of that is generally limited to we're called out of the world of darkness into the kingdom of, of light, right? But he, God yes. began to share with me a little bit more beyond that because I've been thinking, what's the difference in the called out ones, the ones who are called and the ones who are chosen and the elite? And so I began to uh, couple that with the 11 dimensions, mostly from a scientific uh, uh, basis, and we'll get into that in a minute. But it's beginning to release an understanding to me of the differences between the calling and the chosen and the elite based on that scripture. And, you know, we tend to think things one way and one way only, the way we learned it. And in this season of time, we have to begin to test every thought every mindset that we have because he's changed everything and so what he was referring to me your calling many are called your calling is your anointing and many of us are stuck in oh i've received this anointing from the lord and we're stuck in that anointing for as long as we walk on this earth but there's always more so the calling is our anointing and our calling is a limited dispensation until fullness comes. I've said that about the seven mountain mandate. It's a limited dispensation. I've said that about the fivefold ministry. It's a limited dispensation until uh, we come into the, to the perfect man walking in the full stature of Jesus Christ. So your calling is for now, but we don't want to get stuck in in just our calling we want to begin to move beyond that into our mature perfect man that we can move in whatever fivefold ministry that we could you know jesus wasn't limited to be an apostle or a prophet he was a teacher he was everything and so mm-hmm. he was the firstborn of many so we can be that too we'll get into that a little bit more and the chosen one is one who has embraced the maturation process and will function as ambassadors, co-creators, governors, and legislative and judicial sons. That's the chosen ones. That's the process of maturity to a son. But now he said the elite is beyond that. And we'll share some things about the 11 dimensions from quantum uh, string theory that uh, are scientific explanations of what's going on here. And so the elite are those who author have been fully authorized to function in as he is, so are we in this creation in in all dimensions, all 11 dimensions, not limited to just three dimensions. I mean, if we just think about it, how many dimensions am I just living in daily? Probably three, height and depth. That's our limitations. And so it might be coupled with some spiritual. Again, this is just going to be a scientific approach to it. Because you can look up the dimensions of the spirit realm, you get a different <laughs> article. You get dimensions of, of physics, you get a different article. And uh, I want to base it more on, on uh, science. So in physics, we often talk about different dimensions to understand the various aspects of space and time. And so as a Christian, we're, we're as you saw in my eye in this creation, I have to be concerned about what's going on in space and time. Not only what's going on here on earth, but what is going on in all creation. Because we are the ones who's called to, to deliver creation from the bondage of corruption. To redeem all things. The restoration of all things. And so uh, we may be familiar with the, and perceive things in our everyday lives like, uh, the word says in uh, Matthew 11, 12, and 24, I believe it says, about the, the life of a Christian in faith, the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth. And so that's just breadth and, and width is the same thing. So length, width, and height, and depth. And so that's a four-dimensional reality right there that most of us are just, and even me, have just been limited to a lot of times in my training in my upbringing that was i've thought we're here on earth we're just occupying limited time and space until maybe we have an anointing that we're our calling to do something but god is opening up these gates and uh, 
causing us all this revelation to come forth in this time and season. So we're, we're, we're going beyond our present mindsets. And so uh, the, the, the three dimensions or four dimensions that we're talking about in our everyday lives are length, width, and height. And these are dimensions that give objects their size and their shape. So we determine uh, things by what we perceive or things we, that we've learned it or the things we think about things there are lim most of our thoughts are limited to a three-dimensional or four-dimensional reality and there's way beyond there's a reality beyond uh, <laughs> everything uh, that uh, is out there and so again mark mark 11 22 24 and ephesians 3 14 through 19 says there's a christian has a knowledge of the breadth the length the height and the depth true but there's so much more to it that's kind of hidden in scripture that's hidden in science science is science is just the revelation of how god does things right <laughs> so it's always connecting and always we're always learning uh, different things so scriptures actually back it up in psalms 90 verse 4 it says a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by or like a watch in the night thousand years is like a day so that's moving in a different dimension we just related it to a linear dimension from one spot to other spot it's like oh a thousand years is just a day but if you think about that differently i like to challenge my own mindsets i like to think about things differently and when i begin to look at these 11 dimensions i go oh that's the ability to travel beyond our present mindset of how time works if you'd go back and look at Justin Abraham's most recent uh, yeah. broadcast, he talks about time. Yeah. He explains a lot of this right here. And it's really, I think it's one of his best videos. It's a mm -hmm. lot of things what we're talking about here tonight and what we talk about all the time. So a thousand years is like a day. So we're transcending the dimension of time and moving in and out of time, not restricted by time. Justin said something so powerful. He's like, we on earth were created with the sun and the moon and the stars that regulate time but what about other planets yeah they mm -hmm. were created in a different time frame so how do they view time they might be a different view than what we view in our perspective here on earth so uh, another thing uh, god transcended time dimension and it appears in the new testament in uh, second timothy 1 9 God said, uh, who does not lie? Promise the hope of eternal life before the beginning of time. And so we, uh, that's interesting because we tend to look at our life. Well, we're born on this particular day and we'll die and this, we start eternal life then. But the truth of the matter is eternal life began when he knew us before the foundation of the world. Yes. What was that life like? How did we, how, we were light beings back then. He, he mm -hmm. uh, knew us, so we obviously knew him. I want that relationship stored. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want to see that, I want to experience that. So that's the fullness, not just back to, to how uh, Adam lived before the fall or Eve lived before the fall. It goes way back beyond that. So it transcends our current uh, perception of how time works. I'm more and more getting outside of this realm of time and, and I'm just enjoying my space there. It's like, oh, you know, this is really good. I can talk more about the you know, fourth dimension of time here in a minute, but he's promised us eternal life before the beginning of time, which is pretty cool. So a lot of us don't think about that. In string theory now, and the, uh, the physics of string theory, scientists explore additional dimensions beyond what we can directly sense. Who's that on there? Can you mute, please? And uh, I want to read a scripture. What is faith? Is that me echoing? No. Romans 12. No, Hebrews. I'm sorry. What is faith? Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction or the evidence of things not seen that's the key scripture it's not seen the evident our faith is evidence of things not seen in the unseen realm so that is the substance of things hoped for or the evidence of things not seen for by it the people of old retrieve their commendation by faith we understand that the universe or the worlds were created 
by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Now, isn't that interesting when we're talking about all eternity, before the foundation of the world, all the way through to uh, never-ending eternity? That's outside of the realm of time as we perceive it. And where mindsets are here so locked into the, the, uh, the time here on earth, we need to begin to process and come out of those agreements to time if we're, you know, interesting statement I've made before in, in uh, using, uh, using this scripture in uh, courtrooms of heaven is if we're serving time, what does that say? We're in prison. <laughs> Isn't that what they say? I'm serving time for this or that. I'm serving time for my lack of perception of realities. And so the string theory talks about all this dimensions beyond what we can directly sense or see. Hebrew sage known as Nachmanides wrote in the 13th century uh, and concluded that the book of Genesis, that the universe has ten dimensions, but only four of them are knowable by man. Knowable is in quotations. I would like to take that knowable out because uh, if we are uh, one with Christ as he has saw him in this world, we're partnering in his omniscience. And so it's not unknowable. And that was just their perception of it's not knowable beyond the four dimensions. So uh, God is not conformed or confined to the three spatial dimensions at, at, at one time dimension. Neither are we. But yet we talk about, we have the language of re limitations by time and we're in prison because we're, language, our, our decrees and our declarations are all related to time. One day. Or, you know, when I go to heaven, I'll do this, I'll be able to do that. You know, the language can go on and on, a lot of different things, but we have to think, how am I creating from the unseen realm into the seen realm? By faith. And so, God is not conformed to three spatial dimensions. He's all dimensions, and neither are we. And so, uh, <clears throat> an observer living in four dimensions cannot see all of it. Uh, of the 11 dimensions form, although uh, ultimately God cannot be seen because he has chosen to be seen only through the eyes of faith. And so as we exercise our faith rather than hope or one day or saying I can't, we exercise our faith and step into Hebrews 11 1 by faith. Now faith is substance, is the tangible reality of the things I hope for. And the evidence of things that are not seen. Actually, your faith, if you want to go back to courtrooms of heaven, your faith provides a testimony in the courtrooms of heaven. If you look up a couple of scriptures, uh, you'll see, uh, uh, I didn't write them down here, but you'll see what I'm talking about. Your faith is actually a living being that testifies on your behalf in the courtrooms of heaven, whether you operated by faith or you didn't. So God and we can move freely through all 11 dimensions and it would illustrate how we can move outside of the realm of time. The string theory looks really promising in, in these space-time dimensions. There's a man named Dr. Hugh Ross says, The remarkable advances of research reveal a God who lives and operates in the equivalent of at least 11 dimensions of space and time. Now, some of these articles, there were some people that said there can be up to 26 dimensions. It's all theory. It's not proven science yet, but 11 dimensions are becoming more and more uh, beyond theory. They're being proved by science that this stuff is real. So we're going to talk about those 11 dimensions here in a minute. God is transdimensional, so so are we. Omnipresence, impotence is omniscience, so that's able to move in any realm of time, past, present, or future that we need to. I would challenge you, you could probably go into, into uh, in the spirit, into him, and reveal what 50 years from now looks like. Or you can go back 100 years, 1,000 years, 5,000 years, and reset. Or you can go back before the foundation of the world and find out what was your idea of me before the foundation of the world. That's actually when your scrolls were created back at that time. And so that would be a good time to step outside of the realm of time and go inquire of the Lord and find out what is written on my scrolls. 
And you agreed, uh, the sages, Hebraic sages, mystical sages, actually say that you agreed to everything that's on your scroll. So everything that you're, that's happening in your life right now and throughout your whole entire life, you agreed to it. You're good, the bad, and the ugly. It's all for your good. All things work together for the good who's called those who what, love him. And so we look at the evil situations uh, as, or, or dark situations as evil. When I began to look at negative situations in my life from God's perspective, there was peace and there was joy and there was rest because I didn't have to fight a demon. I, I said, God, what are you trying to reveal to me? What do I need to learn in this particular situation? As if I'm outside of the realm of time, as if I'm back with him before the foundation of the world, engaging with him there to find out what, what, my, what is written. Jesus used against Satan, it is written. Now, he didn't have the Bible to go by. He had the original scroll and destiny, what he was created for. He said, it is written on my scrolls that you have authority over you and you can't do what you're trying to do. And same thing with us when we face uh, darkness or evil. So, uh, let's see. Ten dimensions include one dimension of time and nine dimensions of space. So we'll talk about those. Again, 26 possible extra dimensions that... Uh, I haven't found any definition or explanation of them yet, but just, just somebody mentioned, a couple people mentioned uh, 26 possible dimensions. I'm going, ooh, what is our real potential? So uh, super string theory is one of the leading theories that attempt to explain the nature of the universe. And according to this theory, the different aspects of the universe are governed by 10 dimensions. Governed by 10 dimensions. Isn't that an interesting phrase? The leading theories that attempt to explain the nature of the universe according to that theory the different aspects of the universe are governed by 10 dimensions or in other words by us operating in our full potential in every dimension every time and space every place that we need to govern as he directs so that's just like boom <laughs> my mind began to soar it's like oh my gosh it's way beyond what we consider our calling what we consider our anointing it's way beyond being being uh, a legislative and judicial son i believe it's kind of a transitionary place where but that elite means that uh, he has the authority to 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 uh kind of a become kind of thing or to, kind of thing to govern and where authority is given. And so where we are in the sonship movement and the courts of heaven governing co-creation, we're learning how to do that. And I think it's a kind of a gateway to fully, fully being commissioned by the Lord to, to I've said before, is like entrusted by the Lord that we are our own governmental system, uh, that he trusts us so much that he'll give us our own court system we are a governing court system where we walk we're entrusted as one of the elite to operate in in these uh, uh different dimensions so zero dimension now this is scientific zero dimension is rep represented by a dot it has no height no width no depth and an interesting thought it represents singularity that's an interesting word it's like everything is one that's a good enough, <laughs> you know, that's an awesome dimension for, for me. I love that dimension. That's what we talk about all the time. I'm one with God. I'm one with all creation. All creation is one with me. And so let's move on here. If somebody wants to look up that word singularity, that'd be cool. I didn't look it up here, but just briefly, that's what that means. So the first dimension, uh, to that dot, it gives length uh, and uh, like A to B. Most of us live our life on earth. I'm trying here at point A, I'm trying to get to point B and when I die. And that's the end of our existence. That's the first dimension. The second dimension is uh, adds a height to it. So you have a, a dimension that looks like a square. So we're moving into, well, okay, maybe here's my authority over a nation or or that's a limited dispensation so we're understanding okay that's the second dimension the third dimension is involves a sense of area or cross-section almost like a cube has the appearance of a cube so it has length depth a sense of uh, that dimension within the cube 
So it gives us a three-dimensional view of volume, you could say, a volume within a cube. So uh, that can be represented by some different things uh, in creation under the earth, on the earth, uh, in a certain realm of heaven. So uh, still limited. So beyond that, the, the th is, is where we generally live and move and have our being in this limitation we call three-dimensional. But the next dimensions begin to stretch my imagination a lot. <laughs> begin to share how we are uh, being matured to move in some different things. So beyond the three lie the seven dimensions, which are not immediately apparent. So we don't perceive them, but which we can still perceive them uh, and that they're having a direct effect on the universe and everything and reality as we know it. So the fourth dimension is guess what? Time. The fourth dimension is time, which governs the properties of all known matter at any given point, any given moment in time, and along with the three dimensions of knowing an object's position in time is essential to plotting its position in the universe. So it becomes a galactic type mentality how I'm doing how am I affecting thing in the cosmos as he is so am I in the cosmos it goes beyond as he is so are we in this world world means cosmos if you look it up in the Greek it's cosmos so all of creation that the fourth dimension expands us into beyond this earthly uh, perception into a fourth dimension which includes all of creation and that we have the ability to govern certain objects and position within the universe, within all creation. Don't ask me how to do it. <laughs> We're learning. <laughs> We're moving through uh, this maturation process so that we would be entrusted to come to the place where he can really use us in a much more powerful way. So super strength theory talks about the fifth and the sixth dimensions and uh, the notion of possible worlds arises. So all of creation comes into play there. Other worlds come, other uh, dimensions of creations, black holes, everything that you can see, universes, galaxies, are, are of, of that we're talking about in the, the fifth and the sixth dimension. It moves us out of just having a little impact here on earth to have an impact in all creation. And I think I've shared a story that uh, God has been, I don't know if you would call it a test, it's maybe a practice session where he's taken me up in the cosmos and, and showed me some uh, demonic uh, portals that he wanted me to close. And I said, Lord, I don't dare do anything other than what I see you do because I have this fear of the Lord. I don't want to create or destroy anything outside of your will. I have to be like Jesus. I'm only going to do what I see the Father do. Only going to speak what I hear Him say. And on, only thing as a result, if you see me, you see the Father. It's not to build up my ministry. It's a place of unknowing. It's a place of no recognition. It's a place where we can get more done in the quiet place than we can building a congregation, building a network, building a ministry. I think this is a major revelation for the way God is bringing his sons, his legislators, his co-creators, his governmental ambassadors, that he's taken us into all creation, just not here on earth. And so the, uh, if we could see a, into the fifth dimension, we would see a world much different from our own that would give us the means of measuring similarity and differences between our world and other possible worlds. So as co-creators, we can, can see maybe something that has been corrupted by the enemy and have the authority, authority the, the elite status of the Lord that would give us authority, permission to... to, to deem or, or, or uh, deliver creation from the bondage of corruption. When that scripture is like, when I'm reading this, I'm going, that scripture just, just expands to a whole different dimension because we just think about uh, delivering creation on this world from the bondage of corruption. But this is a, the entire created world, an entire creation that we're talking about here. And uh, so uh, there's a theory, theory of ev everything 
the theory of everything is the belief that the universe is made up of 10 dimensions for more, possibly 26, depending on which model of string theory you use, it's attempt to explain all known forces within our universe interact and how other possible universes themselves might work. How they interact and how they are, are, uh, singularity comes into play. Everything is connected. Everything is uh, quantumly entangled. Everything is one in singularity. All, all we are already uh, in singularity with all creation. We just don't perceive it. Our limited mind says, Father, we just break the limited mindsets off right now of our limitations. We've been limited to just this earth and just our, our calling, just, just even our, our chosen status, that you're taking us beyond that. You're taking us to an elite status. And Father, we even want to be careful because you say, your word says, even that elite can be deceived. And so, Father, as we rest in you, as we abide in you, we can begin to be more powerful and more effective that we can affect worlds. We can create and dismantle demonic structures within the cosmos and, 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 and move and place things within the cosmos that's been displaced, uh, move things on earth that have been displaced, de deliver things that have, have been uh, perverted, uh, on the earth, Father, we've given us as your sons, as your governors, as your co-creators, as your chosen and elite ones to begin to work with you to restore what has been perverted, what has been stolen, what has been killed, even bring back to life the things that don't uh, exist today. So that's kind of it. I just wanted to share that revelation that we are more, <laughs> we are more than we think we are. And as we begin to process all these different dimensionalities and, and move into these areas where we come and move and have our being in Him, we live and move and have our being in Him, and we must allow Him to live and move and have His being through us. So it becomes a, a place of exploring and moving into areas we never dreamed possible before. And I want you just I just want to encourage you to begin to inquire of the Lord and ask him where have I been limited? Am I been limited just to operate in my calling or my anointing? You know, that's what we saw a lot in the apostolic prophetic. That was the end, the highest result of everything we did, everything caps off at that apostolic and, and prophetic, but that's that's limited dispensation. We've chosen to be part of a mountain ministry maybe it's education maybe it's the church maybe it's uh, uh, politics or government but that's a limited dispensation because god says that the the of the lord's house will be established on the mountains of the world and the law comes out of mount zion well the law is already written so we are the lawgivers we are the lawmakers we are the ones who the elite ones were we have been entrusted and matured into the place where he says okay I give this to you. And so I think it's an amazing, amazing opportunity. Where we are and where we're going is just truly amazing. Ask the Lord to to be free from all limitations. I was going through this this about the eleven dimensions. I'm going, man, this just really expanded my mindsets where where I've been limited in my mindsets, my perceptions are like, you know, maybe I affect uh, the creation a little bit outside the realm with my testimony I just shared but but then God, God just says you know it's way bigger you are way more than what you believe and it goes back to what I always say is like if we really knew who we are we wouldn't do anything like we do today so we have these perceptions that have limited us and it's really tough to, to do because it's just us. It's just the, our life. It's just the way we've been. It's what we understand. It's how we learn things. And how, it's just the way we are. But a lot of that is, is laid down. In fact, one of my encounters, he took me up into the space one time and no stars, no galaxies, nothing. It was just me and darkness and a few stars, no beautiful galaxies or constellations or anything. He said, Terry, this is a place of unknowing, a space of unknowing. He said, I want you to unlearn everything you've known up to this point in time. 
I was in the apostolic and prophetic. I was seeking the anointing of a well-known prophet. And I was, you know, I was my path. And that was all I knew. But that was a limited dispensation. Now, since I've come outside of the traditional church, I'm learning there is so much more. I cannot be capped off with, with, even though it's good, it's a preparation for where you're going. Don't ever stop, and this is my calling. Don't ever stop, and this is my anointing. You'll be limited. You have to begin to expand everything about you and, and test and weigh everything. Search me, O oh God, to find out if there's anything that stands in the way of my full potential. Isn't that interesting? So I want to open it up for a little conversation here and uh, uh, do your own research on those uh, string theory dimensions. It's pretty uh, involved and pretty awesome and amazing. I, I saw several articles, pulled a little bit of this out of that, but uh, I go, man, we're just babies, <laughs> babies in the day, but thank God he's, he does so much that he's taking us on this wild, crazy, we know nothing about, we don't know how to do it, but out of our intimacy with him, he's going to get us there, and some of us are a little bit ahead, some of us are a little behind, but we're all in this singularity together, we're all quantumly entangled, and so I bless you guys. Uh, I'm glad you're in my life, and you chose to skip the Super Bowl tonight. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> so, so hope this message just just uh, resonates with you and uh, vibrates in your spirit and your soul and your body, where where you get to see there's something much, much more. And we've always asked it. There's got to be more. And this took me into the realm of what what's been there, and then even what's beyond the eleven dimensions into the twenty six dimensions. I think that goes into parallel universes, and, yeah. and uh, that's one idea. I don't know. It's my theory. I believe it goes into that at different uh, places in time, and, and uh, so it's interesting what's happening.